While I was coaching uh, the colleges, I was very concerned of uh, what happens to them when they leave college. So in the 1980s, I started two clubs. It was very small groups, but it was good groups for people graduated from colleges in the area that wanted to compete on a uh, professional level as they left school. But I wanted to start these clubs because I didn't want to see people left out when they got done college and who wanted to continue and run, to continue to run. And uh, I think it, it was a very, very good idea because there wasn't many clubs like there are now in this country to help young men and young women. The Sally May and Athletic Attic Track Clubs were very important in the development of post-collegiate clubs in America. Being a part of those would help inspire another track club that Gags would coach in the 1990s. This club would have tremendous success at the international and Olympic level, the Reebok Enclave. It was very, very important, even though I was coaching at Georgetown, to make sure in the 90s that we had a track club, a post-collegiate track club. And I decided to start with the help of Mike Roach, who was an employee of Reebok, the Reebok Enclave. Mike was my first Olympian in the 70s from Rutgers, and he was working for Reebok and talked to them about it. And it was a tremendous gathering of super athletes and super people with the help of Reebok, my fellow coaches. It was in that first year of the Enclave forming, 1992, the group would have immediate success having two athletes qualify for the USA Olympic team. In 1992, Steve Holman and John Troutman made the United States Olympic team, training with the Reebok Enclave. Holman, who we see in second place, was coming off his NCAA championship victory in the 1500 meters. He ran a very identical race to those NCAA championships. He let Jim Spivey take the lead and stayed patient. Both men had a tremendous finishing kick. Holman didn't overtake Spivey, but him finishing second gave him the ultimate prize of running in the 1992 Olympics in Barcelona. He made it to the semifinal round, just missing the Olympic final by less than a second. It would be the 5,000 meter final where the Enclave group would get their second athlete into the Olympic games. Troutman is on the inside, currently in fourth place wearing white. The leader is Bob Kennedy, the USA favorite at those Olympic trials. We can see that Troutman is boxed in, and the men are really starting to move down that back stretch. Troutman gets out of the box and starts flying to get closer to Kennedy. It looks like Kennedy is going to be able to hold off Troutman's big move. But coming around that final turn, Troutman starts to unload a kick that Kennedy just can't match. John Troutman not only made the Olympic team and was the USA champion at the trials, but it can be argued the last 300 meters of this race is one of the best finishes we've ever seen in the sport of track and field. In 1996, Julie Henner made the United States Olympic team. We see Julie Henner, now Julie Benson, in the middle of this group currently in sixth with just under 300 meters to go. Julie makes a tremendous move to get into second place and keeps hammering towards the leader. This was a loaded field of women, including the leader, Regina Jacobs, a two-time Olympian at this point in her career, as well as Susie Faber Hamilton and Vicki Huber. Julie holds on to a second place finish at the USA Olympic Trials and qualified herself for the Atlanta Olympics in 1996. In just a year after Julie qualified for the 1996 Olympics, 
Rich Kana would have one of the best years by an American 800 meter runner in history. He would start off by earning a bronze medal at the World Indoor Championships and then followed up with a tremendous race at the World Outdoor Championships. With just over 100 meters to go, Kana ran a great race to put himself in meddling position. He charges hard as other men start to falter and gives it everything he has to the line and finishes third for a second bronze medal of the year. You know, we went to 2000. We were very, very fortunate to have Brian Woodward and Rich Kana make our Olympic team at 800 meters. With 100 meters to go, Woodward is in great position to make the Olympic team in third, while Kana is slightly back in sixth. All men are fighting for their life to get to that Olympic Games. Kana starts to pump those arms and close hard. Woodward is staying strong, and both men end up crossing the line at almost the same time for second and third. Both punch their tickets to the Sydney Olympic Games in 2000. While in Sydney, both men would narrowly miss making the semifinals. The thing that really I am so proud of is that we were able to continue careers of men and women who love the sport of track and field and wanted to continue running and also working on a side and so forth to make a buck. But I, you know, Reebok was very, very good during that period of time. But again, post-collegiate running is so important. And we started it in the eighties, in the nineties, and look what's happening now. Just look what's happening now with post-collegiate running. The clubs that are being financed millions of dollars to keep our athletes going and i'll never forget what the athletes in the 80s and 90s did to keep the sport going on a post-collegiate level the reebok enclave was extremely important to usa track and field in the 1990s it was the premier pro running group that laid the groundwork for what we have today with pro running clubs in this country Gags and his fellow coaches got the ball rolling, and after the Reebok Enclave ended, Gags would take his knowledge and experience and solely focus on coaching professional runners in one of the best places to train in the entire country, Palo Alto, California. 